You can hear the cries of nations longing for the hope that you can bring. If you listen with your heart, then you can hear them ask the question, does someone really care for me? Well, we praise God for allowing us another opportunity to come and share with you in the word of the Lord. David said that I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Thank God for you joining in with us tonight. You that are tuning in, may the Lord bless you. Glad to hear from you. Glad to let that you're letting us know that you're listening and being a part of our Bible study on Friday night. I'm Pastor Torrance Markham of the Greater St. James Church in North Chicago. And we thank God for once again on Friday evenings, we have our uh, pastoral Bible study. And uh, as the shepherd of the flock of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we seek to give a right understanding of the word of the Lord. In the book of Nehemiah, it said they heard the word of the Lord distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And in these last days that we live, it is uh, vitally important that we understand the reading of the word of God, that we rightly divide the word of truth, that we speak the truth in love. We don't add anything to it and we don't take anything away, but we stand strongly on the word of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for letting us know that you're out there, that you're listening to us this evening. God bless you. And we're, we're speaking peace over you tonight. The peace of the Lord be upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So going to say a word of prayer. Then we're going to go right into our. Uh, we're in the book. Uh, the book of Micah. And uh, you know when you read the word of the Lord. With the spirit of the Lord. Uh, giving you understanding. And studying the scripture. And see if those things are so. What you really see is. God loves his people. But God has a standard of holiness. And if God did not change his standard of holiness in the Old Testament, he certainly hasn't changed it now. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godly godliness through the knowledge of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So as we go to this book of Micah, it's, a, it's an excellent book, excellent reading. It's, a, uh, it's called Minor Prophet only in terms of the length of the book, but it is powerful, just as powerful as as a book of Isaiah and Ezekiel. So let's say a word of prayer. We're going to go to that third chapter. We're in the third chapter on this evening. Father, we love you. We thank you just for the privilege that we have that's in the name of Jesus, that we come before you through your word. Your word is spirit and life. And ask, God, we ask you tonight that you would speak through your word in the name of Jesus. And that would be not just mere hearers of your word, but work in us your righteousness to be doers of your word. Bless us as we gather here together. Speak, O God, for your servants here and anoint us, O God, to speak your truth. Give us clarity of thought and freedom of expression, and we will praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen and amen. So again, we thank God for you just a gathering. We don't take it for granted that you would come. God bless you, letting us know that you're out there. Thank you uh, that you would come and uh, participate in our um, Friday evening Bible study. And as I said, you should have your Bible, whether you have a, a paper Bible or have your phone, you should have a piece of paper, notebook, and you should have a pen or a pencil, and you should be uh, Writing down as the Lord speaks to you, either while we're reading and God speaks something to you, or as we say something and God 
unfold something to you, you should write it down because you know you need to hear what thus saith the Lord. We're in the last days and men are falling for every wind of doctrine that's given by the slight of men and their cunningness whereby they want they 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 desire to deceive men but you know what jesus said that that his word is truth and truth has no deception in it so we're here with the word of the lord so let's go to micah the third chapter now we understand that micah's uh prophet during the time he, he's a uh, more or less a country prophet during the time of, of Isaiah. Isaiah was more or less in uh, the Jerusalem. Uh, Micah is more or less in uh, in Samaria. He's from uh, Judah, but he's preaching primarily, primarily in Samaria and the nation of um, Israel. And so what is he doing? He's pro prophesying what God's word has to say. He's really the last prophet that um, Israel will have before they're, uh, they're taken over by the Assyrians. And, you know, in the Old Testament, when the prophet came, the prophet came speaking judgment because that was the last uh, line before God would bring his judgment. He would send the prophet to warn the people to repent, to change their ways, change their heart. And if they didn't, uh, swift and, and, and terrible judgment would come upon them. And so we see that here. Micah, whose name means who is like Jehovah. And so we deal with the decline that had ha happened because of their rebelliousness and disobedience to God. So let's begin three and one. And I said, hear, I pray you, O hear, O heads of Jacob and ye princes of the house of Israel. Is it not for you to know judgment? who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skins from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skins from off them. And they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot as and as flesh within the cauldron. They Then they shall cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doing. Now, notice here, he's speaking about the civil leaders, those that are more or less governmental leaders. And he's saying that their wickedness and evilness has been such that they're really destroying the people. Notice, notice the verbiage that God gives him to use. They flay their skins off of them, break their bones, chop them in pieces, pluck off their skin, flesh from off of their bones, eat the flesh of my people, which means they're, they're like wolves. They, they want to destroy. They want to take everything. And notice what we see in the time of, of uh, Micah. And in our time today, we see those that have no God in their heart, don't even think about God, no love of God in their heart, and they want to destroy and take everything that they can get their hands on. We see it all the time where it's, it doesn't matter the feelings of an individual, doesn't matter the pain of the suffering of the person, as long as I can get what I want out of it. So as long as I can get what I want, doesn't matter. I'll take anything. I'll uh, uh, destroy anybody to get what I want. Don't you see the culture of today? And that same culture was in Israel. Why? Because they had turned away from the true God, began to worship false gods, idol gods. And because they worship idol gods, the enemy, Satan, takes over their mind to do whatever they want to do. And whatever they want to do is to destroy others in order for them to have success. Haven't you seen that going on every day? We see where people will destroy the character of someone else or tear down an individual in order to build themselves up. We saw it during the uh, political race. We see it every time that there's an election. In order to be elected, I have to tear you down. I have to destroy your character. I have to destroy who you are in order to build myself up to make myself great.
and really do all of that and and really all of the promises and all of the things that they say they're going to do they do nothing because all it is is to make oneself great pride pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall and he says here he speaks to the princes he said ye princes of the house of Israel so he's speaking to those who are leaders civil leaders governing leaders so God uh, calls for all men to obey his truth. It doesn't matter what position you hold. We live in a day now where people uh, feel as though because I have a position, I can treat people any kind of way. I can walk over people, step on them, manipulate, uh, 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 destroy them in order to succeed. And the Bible lets us know that, that uh, we're going to reap what we sow. And here it says here that God said to them in the fourth verse, then, then they shall cry unto me, but what? He will not hear them. I'm going to cry unto the Lord and the Lord is not going to hear them. All right. It says here, he will even hide his face from them at that time as they have what? Behave themselves ill in their doing in what they've done, in their behavior. So we have to understand that God uh, looks at every area of an individual, our behavior, how we treat one another, our hearts and our minds. And notice here, these civil leaders wanted to destroy, take away, get whatever they wanted, confiscate whatever they could. Didn't matter who the person was. As long as I get what I want, I'm satisfied. And God says, fine, you're going to call on me and I'm not going to hear you because your behavior, your behavior depicts your heart. Whatever is in your heart, that's what's going to come out in your behavior. And they had evil and wicked thoughts, evil and wicked. Uh, uh, the Bible even says back there in that second verse, second, excuse me, second chapter, that they were on their beds in the second chapter in the First verse says, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Their thoughts are evil. The thoughts of the wicked are wicked. They're ungodly. Why? Because uh, uh, when your heart is taken over by Satan, you're going to do whatever the, the, the devil tells you to do. And their mindset was to mistreat and malign and manipulate those that could not help themselves. And we see it every day. We see it going on all around us in our culture today. God's going to deal with it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, he's going to reap it. People feel as though because judgment is not swift. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, because judgment is not swift, the heart of man is set on wickedness, set on evil. And they feel as though, well, nothing has happened to me now. But you know what? God's got judgment that's coming. And that's why it behooves we as believers to live according to the word, not according to the culture, but according to the word of God. So notice this. He's dealing with the civil leaders. Then he's going to deal with the spiritual leaders as we further go down. It says, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets. Now he's going to speak to the prophets. The prophets are the one who are supposed to be speaking uh, for God to the people. All right. That make the people err. Uh oh. They make the people err. Uh huh. That bite with their teeth and cry peace. And he that put it not into their mouth, they even prepare war against them. So it's saying they speak peace over folks who feed them. And people who can't feed them, they speak war over them. Mm, that sounds like today. That sounds like the P-R-O-F-I-T-S's that we see today. That, that word spells prophets. They're not prophets of God. They're prophets to manipulate and make money off of people. What do we see here? It says here they're prophesying. And as long as folks are taking care of them, they're going to speak peace over them. As long as folks do it, they're going to speak peace. But anybody who doesn't, they speak war over them. That is not the prophet of God. Here, Micah is the prophet of God, and he's not speaking uh, these judgmental words over them because they're not taking doing something for him. He's speaking the word of God because Samaria and Israel had rebelled against God. 
in worshiping false gods. And because they worship false gods, they allowed the enemy to take control of their mind and heart. And they were doing whatever the enemy would tell them to do, going against the word of God going against the law of God. I'm here to tell you, my friends, when we raise up another God, another God is going to take us back to Egypt. What are you talking about? When the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt by the power of God, when they got out in the wilderness, they said when Moses had gone up to the mountain, they told uh, Aaron to raise them up another God, not another God to take them on to the promised land, but a God that would take them back to Egypt. See, when you turn away from the one true God, the God who, who has given us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, he's not going to take you on to the promised land, which is heaven, but he's going to take you to Egypt, which is destruction. All right. So listen to this. Listen to this. All right. It says here, uh, then even that they even prepare war against them. Therefore, night shall be upon you that ye shall not have a vision. Uh-oh, God is saying, I'm going to block all type of visions that you think you would have, all right? And it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. He's saying, I'm closing out your vision. You think you got a vision, but you will have nothing. Notice, it was, it's this, during the time of when we go back into the book of First uh, Samuel and we see the prophet Eli who ministered uh, in the tabernacle, all right? You didn't hear God speaking to him at any time. The first time you hear God speaking again, you hear God speaking to Samuel, all right? God didn't speak to Eli he used the uh, uh, prophet that was unknown to come to Eli and let him know that judgment was upon him because he had rebelled against God in allowing his sons to continue in debauchery and evilness and wickedness and perverseness in the tabernacle of God. And you know what? We see that today. It's not only people who are doing wrong. But it's wrong to know they're doing wrong and you don't do anything about it. You know, some individuals who call themselves leaders will have people around them that are disobeying God, going against the word of God, mistreating people. And they're doing the wrong. But that that individual who's the leader won't say anything about it. Won't call them into question. I I remember years ago, years ago in the, the, the Pentecostal holiness church, that there was such a standard that if folks got out of line, they were sat down. Now people are not sat down. They're elevated. The more you do wrong, the more godliness and wickedness you do, the more they elevate you. The more they give you a bigger position. You know why? Because men love darkness rather than light. And see, if your heart is with mammon, when a person can give you mammon, they'll be all right. As long as they, and what did it say here earlier? It said here, thus in the fifth verse, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. Notice, go wrong, that bite with their teeth and cry peace. And he that putteth not into their mouth, they even prepare war against them. So those who are taking care of them, slipping them a little something, they got something or an anointed word to say about it. But those who can't do anything or, or, or do anything for them or won't do anything for them, they got war against them. Now, notice a, a spiritual leader is to be led by God. A spiritual leader is to have the anointing of God upon him. A spirit, spiritual leader is to do what is right regardless. Whether that person has something or doesn't, to be to treat everyone the same way. And we see it every day. We see it uh, 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 has rise up. And, you know, uh, someone said, well, the, the everything that's happening as far as this coronavirus and all of that, you know, it's not just God's judgment against the church. I'm, I beg to differ with you. As God judged Israel and God judged Judah, God judged the church today. Because the Bible says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? 
And so God judges his own. The judgment starts at the, the, the judgment starts at the church. Among the people of God and God, God judges us righteously by his word. He doesn't judge us by feelings or emotions. He judges us by the word of God. I, I wonder, do you hear me? Let me know if you're out there. God bless you tonight. All right. Here it says this. And so it says, I'm shutting the prophets down. That's what he's saying here. He's saying in that sixth verse, I'm shutting them down. Therefore, night shall be upon you that ye shall not have a vision and it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine and the sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them. He's saying, I'm shutting the whole thing down. You're not going to obey me and serve me I have no word for you. I have nothing to give you because you're not a vessel for me to use. That's the key. We're to be vessels used by God. It's, it's similar to you uh, in your home and you're cooking. You're not going to go get a dish that you got out of the garbage and put your food on it. You're going to take that dish and sanctify that dish. You're going to wash that dish and sanctify it, dry it off before you use it. When God uses an individual, he sanctifies them and makes them meet for the master's use. In this culture, the time in which we live now, people feel like God would, well, you know, it doesn't matter uh, because I've been saved by grace. I am saved by grace. Since I'm saved by grace, it doesn't matter what I do. God loves me regardless. But I'm going to tell you, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Apostle Paul said, God forbid. In order to be used by God, he wants a vessel that's dedicated to him. And notice, we see the example given to us continuously in the Old Testament where God would sanctify certain vessels and set them apart to be used in the tabernacle, to be used in the temple. Notice, even the high priest in the Old Testament had to wash up before he would go before God. He couldn't just go before God in the clothes that he had slaughtered the animal with and bloody, all bloody and dirty. He had to go after he uh, got the blood for the sacrifice. He had to go wash himself and put on clean linen sanctify himself. God says, sanctify yourself. And notice sanctification, hallelujah, is a continuous operation by which God is conforming us to the image of his dear son. Okay, let me go ahead. Amen. All right. Anybody, anybody got a question? You just get it to me. All right. But notice this. Notice this. He, he calls the leaders to be saved. Just because we're leaders over God's people doesn't give us license to do what we want to do and live how we want to live. If Jesus, oh, bless his high name, came and set himself apart, God calls especially those who lead the people of God to set themselves apart. Notice what he said. The prophets are causing the people to error. That means they're giving them what they want. And we live in the last days. We're in the last times where men are preaching erroneous and false teaching, any kind of. And you know what? I'm going to say something else. You need to check out where these people are coming from. You don't know where these some of these people are coming from. We just go with anything and everybody that comes along and we need to check out. There needs to be some history about these folks. Where did they come from? Who did they serve under? Who did they learn from? Everybody's a prophet now. Everybody's a apostle. 19 years old, an apostle. 15 years old, and a prophet. Let me, let me go ahead. Um, in the in in Second Timothy, I want you to get Second Timothy. If you don't have your Bible, write it down. Second Timothy, fourth chapter. All right. Uh, second verse says, "Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season." Reprove, rebuke, exhort. See, we forget all of that. Reproving and rebuking. We just want exhortation. But you know what? God has to bring correction before he brings exhortation. See, thank God. Tell me if I'm wrong. Because I, I, you know what? Hell is the wrong place to find out you were wrong. 
All right. Says here. With all long suffering and doctrine. No, and notice there's a way to do it. You're not doing vindic vindictively. You're not trying to attack people. But you want them to, 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 to come into God. Pull your mind in. Pull in the loins, the, the loins of your mind to the word of God. To believe God and obey God. All right. Long suffering and doctrine. Biblically. Not my own feeling about it not just a scripture that I pick one scripture, take it out of biblical context and get a big doctrine on it. No, we have to go line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. The word lines up. When you study the word, you will see God's word lines up uh, 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 excellently. All right, what does it say here? It said, for the time will come, and we're in that will come time right now. When men, when, when what, when they, will not endure what? Sound doctrine. Here it is. We just read back here in Micah where it says, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophet that make my people to err. And then it says here, what are they going to do? But after their own lust, after their own desires, what they want, people want to get a car. People want to get money. People, money cometh. People want to have this. So they raise heap to themselves these type of teachers that just tell them, you are all right. You're okay. You got a blessing in seven days. Thus saith the Lord God. God has favored you. God, they want all of this foolishness and they don't want anybody to tell them you're wrong. I wonder, do you hear me? You know what? When, when John the Baptist told Herod, he said, it's wrong for you to have your brother's wife. He didn't tell Herod, oh, you're a great, you're a great leader. You're, you're a uh, uh, political leader and God has favor and blessings upon you. No, John the Baptist told Herod, it's wrong for you to have your brother's wife. And we need people of God that's going to stand for holiness, stand for truth. You know, we want to be popular. We want to be known. We want to be in the group. We want to be in the buddy, buddy society. We want to be where, where all the fellas are. But I'm here to tell you, some of them fellas ain't living nothing. Let me go ahead. I better quit. All right. This is here. But after that, after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. See, scratching that itch of what I want to hear. I want to do whatever, live any kind of lifestyle I want to. Live a perverted and an abominable lifestyle, and yet I want you to preach to me and tell me that I'm going to heaven any kind of way because God loves me, and he loved me enough. He doesn't want to send anybody to hell. You know, God doesn't want to send us to hell, but guess what? We send ourselves there when we rebel against God. We, God, God, the only place that he has for those who rebel against his word is hell. Hell was made and designed for the devil and his angels. Lucifer, star of the morning, rebelled against God in heaven and was cast out, never to come back again. And the only place that, that it was made for Lucifer, made for Satan and all those that followed him is hell, is the lake of fire. And if we submit ourselves to the devil, we're going the same direction. God said, I'm not willing that many perish. I want all to come to repentance. You know, some people try and make God to be uh, angry, mean, vindictive God in the Old Testament. You know what? God could have wiped out everybody because of his holiness and righteousness. But he brought judgment in order to bring them back to to to. Uh, uh, chastise Israel, chastise his people to let them know that I am your God. Whom he loves, he chastens. Thank God for chastening. If God didn't love you, he wouldn't bother with you. Are you listening to me? If God didn't love you, he wouldn't correct you. If God didn't love you, he wouldn't discipline you. But oh, bless the name of God. As we yield ourselves serving of righteousness, we say yes to the will of God. I wonder, do you hear me tonight? Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. I'm, 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 I'm teaching here. And it says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Here it is. Turn away their ears, what? From the truth and shall be turned under fables. And that's what people are in today. All these type of, of um, 
stories that people make up, all of these type of uh, 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 verbiage that people give. They're into all of that. They Oh, they want to hear that. And if somebody can put a little music to it, they'll really hear it. And they'll just listen to that all day. But when somebody tells them, thus said the Lord, God said, change your way. You know what? When when David sinned, David knew he had sinned, and it troubled him. In one of the Psalms, it let us know that he his bones he, he felt it in his bones, the pain and the anguish of sin, and he thought he was just going to walk away and get away with it. But God raised up the prophet that came and told him and said, "Let's listen. You're the man. You are the man. You are the one." that did this hideous thing in, in Israel. And God still has people who are going to tell you the truth. Thank God for those that you have around you that will tell you the truth. You ought to thank God for them. And I'm talking about not just nitpicking, you know, because some people feel like they're telling you the truth, but they all they are is just uh, uh, highly critical. You know, there's a difference between uh, constructive criticism and a criticizing spirit. Some people, they, they just got a spirit of criticism. They can't find nothing nice to say. They, 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 you, the, you can, uh, the day can be a good day. They got something to say that it's not a good day. So, you know, I'm talking about those who are led by the spirit of God, who are trying to help you to be what God would have you to be. I'm not talking about people who just want to go after you. Some people have a, a you know, they don't want to help you. All they want to do is heap more stuff on you. I want to do you hear me. Let me let me go ahead. All right. We're back in. Go back to uh, Micah. So what do we see here? He's saying that the, those that were in authority in the government were wrong. They were just trying to destroy people, take whatever they could get. And, the, and now he's saying those religious leaders are wrong. They're just pre, 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 uh, prophesying what they want to prophesy, saying what they want, saying something to appease the people, to make everybody feel like I'm OK, you're OK. No. Unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. Let's go on. It says here, then shall the seers be ashamed. Here he is. The seers are going to be ashamed. The dividers confound it. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no, there is no answer of God. They, they're, they're going to be ashamed because they have nothing to say. Notice, they haven't been, and, and, and let's bring it into today. We, we just dealt with the election and dealt with those individuals who were prophesying about who was going to win the election. The bottom line was, if they were living and preaching the truth, they would be saying, repent, no matter who won. You need to repent. They would have been saying, listen, these are the last days. You need to turn away from your sins. Turn away from the spirit of lying. Turn away from the, the spirit of adultery. Turn away from this perverted, uh, ungodly spirit of homosexuality. Turn away from these things. Those are the messages that should have been preached. No, they're trying to get in good with folks. Here it is. It says here, they, they, the folks who are feeding them, they're speaking peace. They're trying to get in good with folks who've got wealth and who've got pr some kind of prestige. They're trying to get in with them. So they prophesy, oh, this person is this and that. See, we need to get out of all of that and get back to the word of God, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were just on Wednesday night talking about it. The theme of the Acts of the Apostles is the power of the Holy Ghost in the believer proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what the believer should be about now. Not trying to prophesy wealth and prestige and tell everybody you're going to be all right. And God's got seven blessings in seven days. You know, how do, how do I get a blessing from the Lord? Let me let me give you the formula. I'm going to give you the formula how you can get a blessing from the Lord. This is what was taught to me years ago in the church of, in the, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you a blessed plan right now. Somebody say, Pastor Mark, I'm giving a blessed plan. Yes, I am. I want you to go to Psalms 1. 
Here's the blessed plan. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Oh, here's the blessed plan now. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, here it is, shall prosper. That's your blessed plan. And this is what? Now, this is what this is, it says in the fourth verse. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. I'm here to tell you, folks may look great now, but the day is coming when all will be revealed. See, just like the chaff, you know what? It's not planted. It's just blowing in the wind. And people think, oh, I've got this and I, I've achieved this. But you know what? Sooner or later, it's going to blow away. Notice what it says here. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff with the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in this congregation of the righteous. Here it is. But the Lord, the, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Uh, that's, your, that's your blessed plan right there. You want a blessed plan? You want somebody to prophesy over you and tell you you got seven blessings in seven day? No. The man that is blessed is the one that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But he delights in the law of the Lord. We need to ask God to give us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, which is a hunger and thirst for the word of God. Oh, bless his high name. Tell the Lord, thank you if, if, if you're listening to me tonight. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. I, we're going to uh, close this out. But we need to get this. God's going to deal with leaders. See, I, 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 I hold on to this because it's serious. God, as, as a leader of God's people over his, his flock, belongs to him. First of all, I have never liked the term that that pastors have used my people. These are my folks. No, they're not your folks. They're not my folks. They're God's people. See, when we change our thinking about that, we'll understand that the people don't belong to us. The people belong to God. Therefore, we're going to stand before God for how we dealt with his people. They're the sheep of his pasture. And all we are are under shepherds. If you're leading in any capacity in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, all you are is an under shepherd. Because the sheep belong to Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So it behooves me in how I act, what I do, how I teach and how I live over God's people. Not to leave them in error, not to leave them where the wolves can eat them. Not to leave them where they can drown in the water. Not to leave them where they can be lost in the forest. But to leave them in, in pastures that's green. And the pastures that are green are the word of God. I wonder, do you, are you listening to me tonight? See, Micah, this is heavy. This is, this is, a, this is a leadership lesson here. When people will want to know, well, how our leaders are to conduct themselves, we ought to read this and see, this is how not to conduct yourself. Because God's anointing will not be upon us unless we obey him. God will, God is obligated, God is obligated to perform his word. Wherever his word is, he's obligated to perform it, both posit positively and negatively. Are you listening to me? All right, let me go ahead. So he says here, I'm, I'm shutting it down. He says, I'm shutting the whole operation down. He says, uh, the, the they'll have no vision. It's going to be dark. They won't be able to divine. The sun shall not, the sun shall go down over the prophet. Then he said, the seers shall be ashamed. The diviners shall be confounded. He said, I'm going to cover their lips for there is no answer of God. Oh, my Savior. Oh, what tragedy it is to get no answer from God. Notice that was the same condition that Saul, the king of Saul, found himself in. 
he had turned away and rebelled against God so much so till he went to the witch of Endor in order to get a word. And that's what people are doing today. Rebel and turn away from God so much so till we go into uh, to witches and warlocks who are who are portraying themselves as men and women of God, going to them trying to get an answer. Well, let me go ahead. All right. Are you listening tonight? Okay. What does it say here? What does it say here? Now, this is what the prophet speaks about what God the anointing of God, the power of God that is upon him. See, he's anointed of God because he's submissive to God. He's anointed of God because he's obeying God. He's anointed of, anointed of God because he's serving God. And so he says here, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. Notice what he says here. I am truly full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sins. Notice what he says here. I have been anointed by God. The spirit of God is upon me because he's in the dispensation whereby the spirit of the Holy Ghost did not indwell the believer because notice when Jesus came, he made it possible that the Holy Ghost would indwell the believer. But in the uh, 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 dispensation by which Mike is in, he says, the spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord is upon me, hallelujah, and of judgment, to speak judgment and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. God, he said, God has anointed me to, to speak against what you're doing. God has anointed me in the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, to speak and say that this is against God. Now, don't notice now, he didn't say God has anointed me to give you a blessing. God has anointed me. And, and if you come to my meeting and bring a, a loaf of bread, I'm going to bless it. And everybody who eats that bread is going to get saved. The devil is a liar. This is the type of things that we see. Not only going on, it's been going on, but now it's just getting more so. If you come and let me lay hands on you. Uh, God's going to move for you. And that, the devil is a liar. I told you already how you could get blessed. If you live for God and obey him, I will, Pastor Mark, are you saying that God won't give you a word? No, I'm not saying that. God will give you a word, but he's already con confirmed that word in your heart before he gives it to you. If you're living saved and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with all the fullness of Christ, God will speak to your spirit, man. But you know what? He will confirm it through someone. God is not going to give you a word and you don't know nothing about it. I, 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 we're going to get into another, but, but notice you, you need to understand this, that when God dealt with, with uh, Peter to go see Cornelius, God dealt with Cornelius to go get Peter. And while God was dealing with Cornelius to go get Peter, God was dealing with Peter to, to go and be with Cornelius. So God doesn't deal on just one end. God deals on both ends when God speaks. And if you're saved and sanctified and filled with the spirit of God and you love God and read his word and seek to him and prayer and fasting and supplication before the Lord, God will speak to your spirit man and he will confirm it by sending someone who will confirm that word. And at the same time, if you're living for the Lord and you get out of line, God is going to straighten you out. You cannot say that you're saved and keep walking in darkness. Uh, let me let me read that. I know I'm going a little over time tonight, and and my my man, he, he brother, he's he's wonderful. He just he he's just wonderful. God bless him. He he just has patience, and I I praise God for that. But we, we need to we need to get this thing straight. It's it's too much foolishness going on, and I'm not reading Pastor Markham's book because I don't have a book. I, I don't have a book. I don't have no books. All I have is the word of the Lord. You know, I have all the study material and and uh, uh, everything that you, you can have in terms of studying the word of God. But my, my foundation book is the word of God. I want you to go to 1 John. Go down to 1 John, the first chapter, 
And I want you to hear this. Fifth verse, start at the fifth verse. It says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Here it is. And in him is no darkness at all, at all. Now that says at all. And if you read it in the King James, it says at all. And those uh, translations that go work along to translate, not to interpretate, they say at all. Notice what it says. It's six verse says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, talking about Jesus, talking about God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You can't say that you love God and you're walking contrary to his word. He says, but if we walk in the light, I can, I can dance and, and shout off of this one. I, I'm, I'm, my, my spirit is lifted right now. Oh, bless his name. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Notice, we have fellowship with the body of believers and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth, continue to cleanse us. That cleansing works in our sanctification, continue to set us apart, that we can continuously be used by God. Cleanses us from all sin. It says, a verse says, if we say that we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, ninth verse, here it is, ninth verse, if not, not cover, not, not, not make it as though it's nothing wrong with it and try and take it out of the scripture in order to appease our lifestyle. It says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everything that's not pleasing to God, he's able to cleanse us if we want him to. See, God is not going to make me live for him if I don't want to. I heard a preacher saying, I love it. I got to get my want to fix. If I want to live for the Lord and desire to live for the Lord, he will empower me in the power of the Holy Ghost to live for him. If I don't, he's not going to make me. And so he says here, the uh, back in, in Micah, the eighth, the eighth verse says, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. God has anointed me to stand up for, for what is right, for the truth of God. Ninth verse says here, hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They say they don't like judgment and no, that thing which is fair, they don't care about. They pervert it. Notice what it says. You change it. You switch it around. You don't like the ju true judgment and you pervert or distort all that which is, is even and balanced. All right. He says they, uh, they build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. That's how it was built. That's, he's speaking about that what they're doing, all of what they're doing in order to enhance and be greater is being built with blood and iniquity. Iniquity is that which is hidden on the inside. Nobody can see. It's the evilness that's down on the inside that, that no, you don't want to get rid of. You just hold on to it. That's why the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's why we say the Lord won't hear a sinner pray. If that sinner keeps on sinning and doesn't want to change, the Lord won't hear him. What did it just say there? I want you to go back to the fourth verse. The fourth verse said this. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Here, I, I got the Bible to back me up. I'm not making this stuff up. God said, I'm not going to hear what you have to say. So if a person wants to continue to sin willfully, rebelliously, and turn away from God and live in any kind of way and think that God is with him, God won't hear it. God hears a repentive prayer. When a person comes to their mind, comes to their senses, and recognize that they're wrong and God is right. That's the first thing we have to understand. God is always right and we are always wrong. And that's why we've got to confess our sin. And we have to ask God to forgive us and cleanse us and accept Jesus Christ as the one who paid the penalty for our sin. See, Jesus paid the price for us. In him is no sin. He knew no sin, and in Jesus Christ is no sin. 
See, people can dialogue about Jesus all day if they want to. But the bottom line is Jesus died on the cross and rose again victoriously. You can't take that away. He is not here. He's risen from the dead. And because he lives, hallelujah, he's able to save to the utmost. And he's able to forgive sin through the cleansing of his. He will cleanse through his blood. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. And that's why a person, it doesn't matter who they are, can say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. Forgive me of my sin. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As God told Moses in the Old Testament, oh, bless the high name of the most high God. He told him, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thank you, Lord. And what God sees is when we repent and ask Jesus to come into our life and save us, the blood of Jesus is applied to our heart, the door of our heart. And judgment is passed over us. I'm getting excited. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm teaching. Hallelujah. I guess I had a little preach on there, but that's all right. God is good. Hallelujah. And he sent forth his only begotten son. And you know what? The same Jesus that saves you, save you, save me. Hallelujah. And the same Jesus that saved you, that saved me, can save anybody. Anybody who says yes to him. And then you know what? We walk in the newness of life. This is a walk. This is not a sprint. This is a walk. You got to walk with God. That means a lifestyle of giving yourself to the Lord, daily submitted to the Lord. Because what will happen if you don't, you will get off course. As these individuals who felt like they were right and raised up leaders, to, raised up prophets to tell them they were right because they had itching ears. Notice this. Let me go ahead. It says, the 11th verse says, the heads thereof judge for, for reward. Listen to this. This sounds like today. The, the leaders, they're judging because they're getting something. And the priests thereof teach for hire. They're getting paid. So as long as they're getting paid, they're going to preach what folks want, want to hear. See, you, 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 you can't preach the unadulterated gospel and not offend somebody. Somebody's going to be offended by the gospel. When you preach the gospel message of Jesus Christ and who he is as Lord and Savior and that he came because we are sinful, wretched and needed deliverance. And the only way we get is through Jesus Christ. And because he lives in us, he gives us a mind and will to live for him and turn away from the evil. When you preach that, somebody's going to be offended. Somebody's going to get mad with you. Somebody's not going to like what you're saying. Well, I don't agree with that. But see, God, you, you, you preach a condemning God. You, 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 I, I, Jesus is loving. He loved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loved the world. He loved the world so much that he gave us Jesus. Jesus loved us so much till he died on the cross. But it's whosoever will. Whosoever will, let him come. I want to do you hear me? So the priest, the priest, they're teaching for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money. So the priests are preaching and they're preaching what the folks want to hear so they can get some money out of it. And the prophets, they prophesying or divining or, or, or speaking a word so they can get something. They want to manipulate people. That is a spirit of manipulation. That is an occultish spirit. You see, that is a spirit that is against the word and against the will of God. And so people try and read you and they'll read the individual and, you know, uh, uh, they'll be calling, calling folks name. I, 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 there's a Sally in the building. There's a Susie, all this. And then, you know what, what gets me is they'll say uh, that there'll be a room full of people of color and they'll say somebody in here has high blood pressure. Are you crazy? You got a room full of people of color and you're going to act, say somebody got high blood pressure. Come on. It don't take a prophet to know that most of the folks in there of color got high blood pressure. And we'll get all anointed and go, oh, yes, he's speaking to me. Hey, glory to God, he's speaking to me. And then we want him to speak over us. It doesn't matter how they live. Doesn't matter where they came from. 
Doesn't matter how many times they've been married, but we want a word from we. I, I need to hear a word. You know how you hear a word? Get on your knees with your Bible and pray, and God will speak to you for yourself through the Holy Ghost. But see, we don't want to take the time. We don't want to invest that time in it. We just want it quick, fast, and hurry. Like you go to McDonald's or go to Wendy's or go to White Castle or, or, or go to uh, 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 the Popeye's and get it quick, fast, and hurry. That's how we want God to move. But sometimes, you know what? God takes his time in speaking to us. I wonder, do you hear me tonight? I hope you're listening. Hallelujah. Notice this, notice this, notice this. It says here, divine, yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Notice what it says. Then they'll say, the Lord is among us. Thus saith the Lord, I'm anointed by God. See, the anointing of God comes through us suffering for the Lord. He that will live godly must suffer person. We have to suffer with him in order to reign with him. See, the anointing, even in the word, anointing means crushing. God crushes us to bring out the best in us. There's an anointing that comes when trouble comes and God brings us through. You know, people say, oh, I want to be highly anointed. Well, you said you want to be highly anointed. God will allow things to come upon you to draw out that anointing that's in you. Anointing does, doesn't just come because somebody says, I'm anointed of God. And if you're anointed of God, you don't have to tell me that. We'll see it. Men may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I want to do you hear me tonight. So is there, this is what they say. Is not the, the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Nothing's going to happen to us. Basically, what they're saying is, Micah, you're just talking. You don't know what you're talking about. But notice what he had said. He had already told us in the eighth verse. He said that I am, a, I am truly, I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. So he's already told them that the anointing of the Lord is upon him. And he's speaking these these words because God has given to it. Now, you know what? God gives him to, to a word of conviction and also a word of hope as we read. When you continue to read, we, we go into the fourth chapter, you see God speaking hope to the people, speaking that he's going to help them. There's going to come a day where there's going to be a day of salvation, a day of deliverance, a day where uh, 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 the, the Lord will reign in righteousness and truth upon the earth. He's, he's telling what's going to happen. He's giving them hope. God gives us hope. Even when he speaks judgment on what's going on now, God yet speaks hope and lets us know that he is a deliverer. It says, therefore shall Zion, therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field. Notice what he said, I'm putting them under. Uh-huh. And Jerusalem shall become heaps and the mountains of the of the house as the high places of the field. So he's saying that destruction is coming. And we understand that as we read historically and biblically, we see that uh, the nation of Assyria came against Israel. We see that the nation of Babylon came against Jerusalem. God did not allow uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar to utterly wipe out or destroy Jerusalem, but he trotted on it because God is a God of his word. And he brought that judgment because what? The leaders had rebelled against God. The civic leaders had rebelled against God. The religious leaders had been rebelled against God. The people had rebelled against God. And so God said, I will bring judgment upon you because you have rebelled against me. You would think that somebody who called themselves a prophet, but just besides Micah, would have risen up and told the truth. But now notice they had a spirit of deception because they were caught up in the times in which they lived and they wanted to enjoy themselves they wanted to enjoy the the pleasure of sin for a season the bible speaks in hebrews 11 chapter speaks about moses that moses rather would suffer with the people of god than to enjoy sin for a season but we see the contrary happening here these prophets want to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season 
and we see that every day. So, so it, it, you know what, my friends, this, this, this goes from the pulpit to the door. It goes to every believer, whether you're a leader or not. God calls us to His righteousness and holiness. God calls us to be different. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we ought to take it seriously. Anybody who's in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what position you hold. It doesn't matter if you're a, a pastor or a deacon or a, a lay leader that's in, over uh, individuals in the body uh, serving here, whatever. God, God's going to hold us accountable and responsible. We've got to stand before God. It is a serious thing to recognize and realize that one day all of us are going to stand before God. And I believe we need to take that seriously. It's not a joke. It's not funny. It's not just something you do. Everybody going to stand before God. I don't care who you think you are, who, what your name is and what you call your title to be and how you lord your title over everybody. And try and make people afraid and fear. You know what? The, 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 the higher people, the higher that God takes a person, the more humble they ought to be. Sometimes you can't give a person a position of, or authority because then they just get reckless. They get out of control. They feel like they can just say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do. But we need to take this into consideration. And as we read uh, 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 Micah, because we see the first three chapters had to deal with the judgment that God has declared upon uh, Israel and Judah. But then we see the next two chapters will deal with the blessing that God will speak over over Israel and Judah. God will bless them. The remnant that will hold on and believe and trust God. God is going to bless them. He's going to speak life over them, deliverance over them. He's going to speak hope over them. And that's what God has for us today. No matter what we're going through, our hope is in the Lord. Our deliverance is in him as we trust him and lean heavy on him and obey him with all of our heart. Love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind as we love him and say yes to him. Saints, let's keep a yes in our heart to the Lord, a yes to the will of God. As we say yes to him, he's going to take us through. He's going to give us victory. We will be that remnant that God will, will catch up. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's our hope. That is our expectation. And notice now, not only will we be with him, uh, be caught up to be with him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But when he comes in his second coming, we're coming with him. And old saints used to say, The saints are going to judge the world. Oh, bless his name. So we want to live so that we can see the glory of God revealed, not only in our hearts, but in the hearts and minds of those that are around us. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for joining in. I know I'm a little over time, but I appreciate you staying along with us. You need to read this. I'm telling you, many times when you read the word of God, it's like reading the newspaper. You say, God, that was going on then, it's going on now. But now, not only that, the hope and the peace and the joy that God spoke over his people Israel, he's speaking over us today, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it in the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But he, he is given to us by his spirit. So we want you to trust God, hold on, stay with him, pray and seek him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and, and let's continue to love one another. So we thank God for you tonight. I do want to say that should the Lord bless us, uh, the Lord blessed us. We had a uh, worship service here on this past Sunday, and we had a nice audience that came to be a part uh, through the CDC. They've opened it up that you could have 50 people uh, in attendance, and the Lord had us around that. We were close to that number that came to worship with us Sunday. We thank God for you coming. But we also say, even if you're unable to come, we thank God for you tuning in and being responsive and being a part of the worship experience as we come together. So should the Lord bless, we will meet together on Sunday at 1030. Just before that, let me let me uh, uh, 
reiterate that on tomorrow at 9 30 uh our own uh, missionary regina white will be uh conducting a series in stress so we want you to tune it in tune it in be a part of it god has anointed her and given her uh, a blessed uh material and information that uh, that's helping the people of god we need help we need all the help we can get my friends my dears and sirs and this is helpful through the word of god as she takes us through the word uh talking about stress and it's, and it's relation to us in terms of what it does and then how we can alleviate it all this great material she will have on tomorrow should the lord tarry and bless us to live at 9 30 a.m on saturday tomorrow is saturday if you're tuning into this live saturday morning at 9 30 tune in we also have on sunday our worship service starts at 10 30 we would that you join in and worship and praise should the lord say the same bless us to live we will be going forth in the word of the lord on sunday morning at 10 30 we will be on our web web page and on on uh, the youtube page and also on our facebook page so if you can and would we want you to join in and be blessed to the lord we also have you thank you if you go on our web page all of our information is on there the, we have prayer uh conference prayer call line that you can call in and be in the prayer line I'm telling you, God is ministering to his people. God is protecting his people. God is covering his people. The, the prayers of the righteous is availing much. God's people are travailing before God, and God is moving by his spirit. We're crying unto the Lord, and the Lord is hearing our cry. He's moving in behalf of his people. Thank God for Jesus. And we want you to join in and be a part of the, the prayer lines that are there. Also, we have Sunday school at 930 on conference call. Then we have our YPWW and they're going to be conducting a series of teaching in apologetics. You need to be a part of it so you can know how to defend the faith that you're in, to stand firm in the foundation of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all on our conference call. You can go on our Web page, see all of the information that you need to participate, be a part of uh, our conference call and also our conference prayers that go on Tuesday and Fridays at noon, Tuesday evenings at six and uh, on. Uh, and uh, so you have all the information there that you can be a part of uh, what God is doing for the people of the Lord. And again, we thank God for all of you that participate and let the Lord touch your heart in giving to support the work of the Lord. As we give, God supports the work of the Lord, the things that the church is able to do and able to accomplish through your gifts. And as you give, God will multiply seed to the soul. We believe in God's system. God's system has not changed. God's system remained the same. And that's giving of tithing and of offering. And we give as uh, uh, gracefully. We give under grace. You know what that means? That we give abundantly. We give out of our heart. We give because we love God and we want to give. And we bring the Lord our offering. And, and we say to the Lord, thank you, Lord, for blessing me. And we sow into the work of the Lord. So as you give, God will bless you. And I believe in giving myself. I don't, I'm not telling you to do something that I don't believe in. I believe in giving. God blesses because I believe in giving. He multiplies seed to the sower. He will make a way. He will open doors. He will give you favor as you seek to please him and obey him in every area of your life. God will be with you. So we thank God for you joining with us uh, on tonight. We pray that something has been said to encourage you, to strengthen you in the way of the Lord, that you'll continue on with us and keep letting us know that you're listening and that you're out there. Also, as I mentioned on uh, on Wednesday night, we have our Bible material, excellent Bible material, excellent Bible material that we have that the Lord has blessed us to uh, have a ministry uh, that we have connected with that does a wonderful, tremendous uh, job in 
divining the word of the truth. And it's called Greater Than Gold Bible Study Series. And the, the it's just excellent. All 66 books of the Bible uh, laid out and uh, we can get the information to you. Well, it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. But we need your email address. So if you get us your email address, we appreciate those who got their email addresses in. We got it to the person to get it to you so that you can get the material and you can study along with us and be a part of the Bible study as we go forth. And you can have this material. It's free of charge. We want you to have it. And you know what? You can write all in it and you can use it again and again on Sunday school lessons and your personal devotions is a blessing, a tremendous blessing to you. So we want you to get this material. So please get us your information in. We'll get it to you so you can have it and participate uh, with us as we study the word of the Lord. All right. So we thank God for you tonight. May you be strengthened with might in the inner man. Stay with God, no matter what. Hold on to God. What the enemy is trying to do is defeat the saints to make you feel like you need you give up. He will he will come at you every kind of way. He will use any and any everyone to come against you. But you stand strong in the Lord. Know that your faith is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. It's a war going on, but the victory belongs to us in Jesus Christ. So we want you to stay with God and hold on and continue to seek him. So be healed, be strengthened, and be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you on tonight, and peace be multiplied to you.